Thank you for joining us for this week's edition of Southwest Connections, our new campus-based TV show that brings you some of the stories behind the many people that make Southwest a great place it is. I'm Bill Molso, and I'm the host of the show, so let's hear a little bit more about what's happening on campus. Our guest today is Assistant Professor of Management, Dr. George Taylor. Uh, Dr. Taylor is a first-year faculty member who plays a key role in the newly formed Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship. Welcome to the show, George. Thank you, Bill. Nice to be here. George, you're new to the SMSU faculty and you have a really interesting background, so tell us a little bit about that and what brought you here to SMSU. All right, um, it's good to start from the beginning. I uh, started my career in the Navy uh, as enlisted uh, out of Chattanooga, Tennessee. I became an officer in year 10, and as I was serving to become an officer, I started to get the entrepreneur bug. And as I got the entrepreneur bug, I went to the reserves, and while I was in the reserves, uh, I started the company, and the company specialized in real estate development as well as technology. Uh, I had a partner come in five years into my business, and he wanted the company to be completely technology. And as a result, we discontinued real estate and went for technology. And when we became a technology company, our basis was to take the needs of the company, their technology needs, and make sure that the technology infrastructure best met the needs of the organization. Uh, once I retired from the Navy, that was 2012, I went into higher education. And I started as an adjunct professor, uh, and then I became a full professor in 2015 uh, in Oklahoma. Uh, my plans in Oklahoma, I was rocking and rolling in Tulsa Community College, but it was always my plan to ascend within the leadership ranks of the community college or to go into a university at the five-year point. And it just so happened that this opportunity came right at year five. <laughs> and so that brought me to uh, SMSU. And as I was interviewing for this position, one of the things that really excited me about the possibility was the center coming online. And so while going through the interviewing process, they said, you know, you have the skill set in which you can bring the center to life if that so interests you. And so that interests me going through the process, and then I get here, um, and it's been rock and rolling ever since. So this is the first year for the Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship. Tell us a little bit more about what that center is all about. Well, a couple of years ago, and you probably know this, Bill, in 2019, Dr. Doug Simon, Dr. Denise Gershenauer, and Ms. Liz Struve got the grant paperwork together to get the center going. And then we get COVID, right? So I just so happened to be coming in, right place and right time. And the task was to make sure that we operationalize the center. And so what does that mean? In operationalizing the center, I needed to go out first to the community and create awareness about the center. We needed to get students into the center. And then we, of course, had to introduce the new curriculum. So all those activities came online at the same time, all during the semester. And what really surprised me and made me excited was that students were excited and the community was excited and the curriculum for the most part went off without a hitch. Um, so this semester we're going to continue those activities but the aim is to bring in more community stakeholders because they're very anxious to get into the center. So you uh, work to bring several different entities together. Uh, they were already established entities. There are a couple of them like the Southwest Marketing Advisory Center and also the Small uh, Business Development Center. How will this partnership benefit those existing entities? Well, the Small Business Development Center and the Southwest Market Advisory Center were already successful, as you know. But the way I picture the center is, the center is like a mall, right? When you go to the mall, you have a specific need that you're looking for. You want to go in to buy clothing or buy a piece of equipment. But as you go into the mall, you find something else that you need, right? And so there may be a specific need from a business owner for SMAC, right? They might want to conduct marketing research, for example. But as they're in the center, they can see the other entities within the center and how they interact with each other. And they might want to develop their business succession planning. Or they might want to find out how they can increase and make best use of financial resources. So the center provides that framework in which when you go into the center, the business owner can see the different entities and how those different entities work together to solve a complete set of needs. So you're taking the lead on this new center. Uh, tell us, what does that mean for your role? Well, 
When you have something this significant going out to the community, one of the things you gotta do is you gotta have a brand ambassador. You gotta have a change leader. So my role is to create awareness about the center, make sure we get out into the community where the business community and the larger community, because they intertwine, know about the center. And they know the value that the center would bring to the community. And Bill, that's a lot of talking. That's a lot of phone calls. And that's not just one conversation. That's multiple conversations. And as a result, uh, we're starting to pull people into the center and they want to find out more information. I'll give you one specific example. Um, SWIC, or Lift Pathways, who are our secondary school partners, they're working with us now to find out clear pathways and how they can get to the center, right? How do I get students in high school to the center? We also have business owners that want to know, you know, what do you do besides marketing or what do you do in addition to marketing? We have students that want to know um, what type of learning would take place and when and where would I interact with the center. So in getting all the pieces going, you have this hub of activity in uh, SBDC, as well as the Southwest Marketing Advisory Center. Uh, there are key pieces, but there are two pieces within multiple pieces that are housed in the center to include curriculum and cross-disciplinary uh, partnerships. George, I know you're a big advocate for experiential learning. And uh, what does that mean for those that maybe don't know in terms of um, how it will benefit our students? Experiential learning is best said in two words. Learning by doing, three words. Learning by doing. So it's action learning. And so in a traditional model, students are still getting education delivered in a Socratic method, right? It's just theory for the most part. However, as in our program and through experiential learning, the students are actually going out and doing. So the students starting with entrepreneurship fundamentals are actually starting to lay the groundwork for their business. Then they go to the marketing classes and they get to actually develop their marketing plans. We got people, uh, business owners coming into the community and the students have an opportunity to provide assistance to business owners in the community and then we have our secondary school partners, the high school students, to come in and the students can partner and even coach those students as well. Talking about entrepreneurship, you know, we now offer a minor and a certificate in entrepreneurship. Tell us a little bit about what curriculum looks like for both of those. You started to touch on that and maybe what the difference is between the minor and the certificate. Okay, sure. Um, as far as the core curriculum, what I mean by core curriculum, the actual entrepreneurship classes that one would take, there's no difference. We're talking about five classes, 15 hours. So the difference is really the, the audience, right? Who are we gearing? So for the certificate, they are geared more toward a working adult. They may already have a degree, right? And so all they want is the 15 credit hours to be a better entrepreneur or to be a new entrepreneur, and they would just take the certificate where the minor itself is housed within their degree program, and that's more geared toward a traditional college student that wants to learn about entrepreneurship within the context of their degree program. So same classes, as far as entrepreneurship classes, different target markets. Good. So we talked about entrepreneurship. There's another key word in the center's title, and that's innovation. Mm -hmm. What does inter innovation mean, and, and uh, what does it mean to you? Well, innovation to me means the process of making incremental or dynamic improvements to a process. And that's exactly what it means for the center. And the innovation piece is just as important as the entrepreneurship piece because the, entrep the center is built on the entrepreneur mindset. And the entrepreneur mindset theorizes that, hey, there is creativity, collaboration, and teamwork that stands across other areas in addition to entrepreneurship. And as a result, you are able to get more innovative practices within the company itself. So equally important is telling others how the center communicates value to them, and innovation is a piece of the center that speaks to everyone. Because if I just say entrepreneurship, then the traditional notion of entrepreneurship comes to your mind. But when I say innovation, 
then that has a bigger impact and that's more likely to make a bigger connection with the community. Very good. I know you've been a, a big advocate for the center and a, and a big cheerleader, like you said, is very important. You've been out in the community talking to businesses, and I know that's a little bit of a challenge here in this pandemic time. But what have you learned so, mar so far from the b business community? Business doesn't stop, <laughs> right? And so, you know, I shared with you before we came on the air that businesses are very much engaged with the center already. The community is very much engaged with the center already. And they want to know what value does the center bring to their business right now. So though they may not come to the uh, actual campus, they still want advice and they also want to know the plan for the center moving forward and how they can be a part of that. Um, most of my first semester was spent educating the community on the attention of the center, right? And also another big piece of this related to the pandemic is also communicating just how the center helps other centers internally within the university. So this is truly a partnership with the community, with students, and with our other centers of excellence. So the pandemic has not slowed us down. Not anyway. slowed you at all. Yeah. Yeah. You are an entrepreneur, and it's been it been a part of your career path. What personal traits are beneficial to someone who wants to strike out on their own and maybe explore their entrepreneurial side? Mm. You need to be persistent. You need to have grit. You need to have confidence. You also have to be able to face barriers, right? One has to be able to develop a plan and know how to work that plan. But they also have to be honest with themselves and take an honest inventory of their talents and skills so when there are gaps in those talents and skills, they know how to mitigate those gaps. Whether you bring in another business owner, whether you get training and development, you have to truly know who you are. And you also have to know that when people buy into your company, they're not just buying into your product and service, they're buying into you, and they're buying into your vision. And that's a responsibility that no other career or very few careers offer, aside from maybe a CEO. Uh, and so entrepreneurs need to make sure that they understand that their business is so much more than just how they envision it. It can impact community. It can provide jobs. It can serve as partnership to university and other important institutions within the community. So we've just completed the first semester. As you said, there was a lot of groundwork laid uh, to kind of get things geared up. Um, now as we start spring semester and get ready to roll, what can we expect from the Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship here in the new year? A lot of contact, a lot of engagement in the community. Um, some very tangible things that we're working on is making sure that senior leadership can also talk to the center and the value that the center provides. That we start looking for partners and working with partners such as the Business Chamber of Commerce, local government leaders, local community leaders, and just as important, other institutions uh, in higher education. So a lot of this work is already taking place on the back end but we want to make sure that we make that effort more visible within the center where our community stakeholders can say, ah, this is what's going on. And our students can say, you know what, I see myself in the center as well. And one of the key goals we have for the center is to make sure that everyone uh, that's a stakeholder at SMSU can see themselves in the center. You talked briefly about the pandemic and how business doesn't stop. In the classroom and with the center, what what opportunities has actually come out of, of this pandemic and the way we've had to do things here the last fall, this last fall? Uh, as it pertains to the center, the biggest opportunity is how can I think differently about my degree plan? And I'll give you a specific example. There are some students who are majoring in other degree programs, um, but they're taking the entrepreneurship course because they want to know how they can be innovative within their firms. And by being innovative within their firms, they are promoting the notion of entrepreneurship. And that's probably one of the biggest sources of feedback that I got from students is that, hey, you know what? I major in exercise science, but now I can think differently about how I can employ exercise science within my firm. Or I'm majoring in uh, agriculture, and now I can think differently about innovation and how they apply to my degree program. So I know I keep harping on this piece about collaboration, but I just want to make sure that everybody knows that there's a space for them at the center 
Uh, and that's one of the biggest goals that we have going forward in the spring semester. Very good. If someone's interested in learning more about or engaging with the center, how do they get a hold of you? Uh, they can contact my office phone. I'm, a, I'm extension 6180. They can also contact me via email, george.taylor.2 at smsu.edu, or they can come by the office. I'm located in building 313B, 313B. Very good. One last question sure. for you. George, if you could tell a prospective student and their family why SMSU was the best place for them, what would it be? Um, we have quality curriculum. We have faculty that care. We have staff members that care. Uh, it has a family feel. You can grow here within SMSU. And we have the partnerships that a student can see clearly how their program leads back into a quality uh, life and how they can continue to provide to the communities they serve. Thank you, George. Appreciate you joining us today. Thank you for having me. Well, coming up next week, uh, classes resume here at SMSU, and we're excited to welcome students back for spring semester. Also coming up on January 18th, it is Dr. Martin Luther King uh, Junior Day here on campus, and our day of service will actually be a virtual event this year. And so we encourage everyone to go online and look at the opportunities that are available both with programming but as well as ways to uh, get involved and serve. So check out our website, smsu.edu, to find out ways that you can get involved uh, with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day uh, coming up on the 18th. Once again, thank you to Dr. George Taylor for joining us today. Tune in again in two weeks when Brittany Kroll, Director of Student Services, will be my guest here on Southwest Connections. Thanks for joining us.